Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Sausage Pasta Fazool. That's right, I'm really looking forward to showing you this easy and extra meaty version of Pasta Fazool, which of course is the Italian-Americanized version of Pasta Fagiole, which you are certainly free to pronounce and spell that way if you want. But not me. As a second-generation Italian-American, I will proudly be misspelling and mispronouncing this. But Americanized names aside, this is one of the best cold-weather comfort foods of all time and relatively fast and easy to put together, as you're about to see. So let's go ahead and get started. And first up, we're going to brown our sausage in a little bit of olive oil over medium-high heat. So I'm going to go ahead and toss in about 12 ounces of sweet Italian sausage, which for me were two large links that I removed the casing from. And what we need to accomplish here is two things. We want to brown this while breaking it up into some nice small pieces. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my completely normally sized wooden spatula and break up that meat while it cooks over, like I said, medium-high heat. And obviously you can break this up as small as you want, but I still want to see a few chunks in the final product. So I'm not going to go too fine, but I will work that over with the spatula while it cooks until I have something resembling what you see right here. And once that's been accomplished, what we can do is lower our heat to medium and add in two optional ingredients, a little bit of diced celery, as well as some chopped onion. And we'll go ahead and stir that into our sausage and continue cooking for about four or five minutes or until those onions turn translucent. And I say optional because if you're doing this for a quick weeknight dinner and you don't want to do the slicing and dicing, that's okay. It's still going to be fantastic. But if you can spare a couple extra minutes, a little bit of aromatic vegetable is always going to improve the flavor. But anyway, like I said, if we're using them, we're going to cook that in that sausage fat for about four or five minutes until those veggies kind of soften and sweeten up a little. At which point, believe it or not, we're going to add our pasta in the form of, at least for me, elbow macaroni. And what we're going to do is stir that in and cook it for about two minutes. Which might seem a little odd, but trust me, this is one of the keys to this recipe. All right, most people are going to toss their pasta right into the boiling liquid, but I think by adding it here, we're going to infuse it with even more flavor. At least that's my theory, which I warn you is going to be very hard to disprove. So I'm going to go ahead and cook that macaroni stirring for a couple minutes, at which point we're going to add a nice big spoon of tomato paste. And we'll go ahead and stir that in and cook that for a couple minutes. And by the way, there's two basic styles of pasta fazool that I categorize as the red and the brown varieties. Okay, the red ones feature more of a tomato sauce base, whereas the brown version, which I'm featuring today, is more of a meaty broth infused with tomato. So while I have had and enjoyed the tomato sauce based versions, I really do prefer this style. So we'll go ahead and cook that tomato paste for a couple minutes until our mixture is looking something like this, at which point we can go ahead and pour in our chicken broth. And for this recipe, you're probably gonna use up about four cups of broth, but I generally don't add it all at once. What I'll do is dump in about three cups here, and then save the rest to adjust with if I need later. So we'll go ahead and dump that in, and of course that's gonna deglaze all the goodness on the bottom of the pan. And then what we'll do is raise our heat up to high because we wanna bring this up to a simmer. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll go ahead and add a little bit of seasoning, which will definitely include some salt. But be careful, that's gonna depend on how salty your broth and or sausage were. And then we will also do some freshly ground black pepper, as well as some hot Italian chili flakes, or a shake of cayenne, or both, why not? And then last but not least, I'm also gonna do a pinch of dry oregano. And yes, I do have a fresh oregano plant in the garden, but for this, I actually prefer the slightly mustier flavor of the dry. But I think a little bit of herb fresh or dry is very nice in this. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and season that up as we see fit. And like I said, wait for it to come to a simmer, at which point we can back our heat down to medium and cook this stirring occasionally for about five minutes. And I say medium heat, but you're gonna to have to keep an eye on this and adjust it so it's simmering just right. Okay, we don't want a rolling boil, but we definitely want it simmering enthusiastically, something sort of like this. And if we were just boiling that macaroni in salted water, it would only take about five or six minutes to cook all the way. But because we're basically cooking this in a sauce, it's gonna take a little longer. Okay, start to finish this is probably gonna take about 10 minutes to cook all the way through. But again, that's gonna be up to you. So like I said, we're gonna go ahead and let this cook for about five minutes, stirring occasionally, at which point we'll finish this off with our greens and beans. And for the greens today, I'm gonna be going with Swiss chard which is very easy to prep. We're simply gonna rip those nice tender green leafy parts off those tough white ribs. Okay, just tear it off like this. And once we've removed the leaves, what we'll do is kind of wad it up and then slice it across. And then once that's set, we'll just give it the old choppa choppa until it's as small as we want. And if you want, you could prep your Swiss chard ahead of time, but I always think it's a lot more exciting knowing you have exactly five minutes to prep it before it has to go into the sauce. You know, kind of like in the movie where the hero has to defuse the bomb in five minutes or the whole world explodes. 
It's just like that, only more exciting. So we'll go ahead and slice and chop those Swiss chard leaves, at which point we'll transfer that into a bowl, because we really do want to wash this stuff thoroughly before it goes in our pasta fazool. And the best way to do that is fill this with cold water and swish those greens around with your hand, and that way any dirt or sand is going to fall to the bottom. And that way when we fish this out to add to the pan, it's going to be perfectly clean. So like I said, we're going to go ahead and use that five minutes to prep our greens, at which point we'll head back to the stove and see how we're doing. And as you can see, just in five minutes, that pasta is going to be pretty close to being cooked, but not quite. So at this point, we'll go ahead and add our greens after checking our liquid level. Remember, we reserved some of our broth. So I'm going to go ahead and add another splash here because I decided I wanted this just a little bit thinner. And then we'll go ahead and dump in those greens and stir them in. And don't worry if you think you put in too much greens. It might look like that when you first start stirring. But as you'll see, these are going to wilt down very quickly. And after a few seconds, you'll realize, oh, that's not too much. That's the perfect amount. And then what I'm going to do at this point, besides switch to a different spoon, is give our liquid level one more check. And to me, this is looking just about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and add the last major ingredient, one can of drained and rinsed Italian white beans, also known as cannellini beans. And we'll go ahead and stir those in. And then once our beans have been mixed in, all we need to do to finish this off is continue cooking stirring for just a few more minutes or until our pasta is perfectly cooked. And by perfectly cooked, I mean perfectly tender. Okay, you cook it any way you want. You are, after all, the Vita Blue of your pasta fazool. But I don't think this is something where you want your pasta al dente. So I continued cooking and stirring for a few more minutes until I determined my macaroni were perfectly cooked. And once that's set, we're pretty much done, except for two easy but important things. We're definitely going to want to give this a taste and check for seasoning. It almost always needs another pinch of salt and maybe some pepper. And then what we're going to do is the last official step is turn off the heat and stir in a little bit of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And you may be thinking, is this one of those recipes where we could get away using the fake stuff? No, definitely not. You're going to want to find some real Parmigiano Reggiano. So with the heat off, we'll go ahead and grate in a little bit of cheese and stir that in. And that's it. Our pasta fazool is ready to serve up. And hopefully a nice warm bowl. And right here, you're going to get a great look at what I think is the perfect liquid amount. All right, I'm not trying to serve a soup here. All right, it should look like a bowl of pasta. But I do want to fare them on a broth, if for no other reason than to dip our bread. So we'll go ahead and serve that up. And I'm going to finish mine off with a little more grated Parmesan. And because I have it, a little bit of freshly chopped Italian parsley. And then last but not least, we'll finish off with a few drops of extra virgin olive oil. As well as the optional but mandatory crusty Italian bread. And that's it. My version of sausage pasta vizool is ready to enjoy. And I think something this delicious and comforting is going to work anytime. But especially after one of those days. You know the days. It's cold, it's damp, it's windy. Not to mention you just got through a long day at work, or your coworkers just don't get you, and your boss is, what's a nice word for it? Totally incompetent. If you get home after one of those days and treat yourself to a bowl of this, suddenly and almost magically, everything seems right with the world. And sure, maybe the red wine you're serving with this has something to do with that. But mostly I think it's that comforting stick to your ribs goodness, which is the magic of a dish like this. This is like getting a big warm hug from an Italian grandma without all that perfume. So just a very hearty, comforting, and incredibly delicious dish that start to finish is only gonna take you about 30 minutes, okay? So for those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.